whatever you do, we'll thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. seat now. Amen. Say, sit down, stay down. Don't forget now, tonight, we're having the Sons of Thunder uh, be here in person. A lot of good singing, a lot of good preaching, special, sort of a Labor Day blowout service tonight, 6 o'clock. It's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, we might even have watermelon, I don't know. Uh, uh, but uh, we, we'll have a good time of fellowship, a good time in the Lord. And looking forward to that. So don't miss tonight's service. And then, of course, bring your Bible Wednesday night. You'll need it. Uh, everybody settle down now. Let's get settled down, sit down, stay down. All righty. Amen. Amen. 1 Corinthians chapter 10. 1 Corinthians chapter number 10 this morning. Turn there with me, please, in your Bible. Don't forget to pray for us. I'll be driving all day Thursday, going to Maryland. And uh, preach there Thursday night, Friday night, Saturday night. And then er coming in early Sunday morning, probably 4 or 5 o'clock sun next Sunday morning. So uh, don't, forget to, uh, don't forget to pray for us. 1 Corinthians chapter number 10. And we'll look this morning at uh, verse number 10. This is a great verse of scripture, and I would strongly urge everybody in here to memorize this verse. Certain verses are so good, so outstanding, they need to be memorized. This is one of them. 1 Corinthians 10, 13. There hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. So when you're going through a big temptation, don't say, oh, I'm the only one in the world. No, this has never happened to nobody. No, it's common. What you're going through is common. You're not the only person going through what you're going through. But God is faithful Amen. who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able, but will, with the temptation, also make a way to escape that ye may be able to bear it. I want to preach this morning on the subject, temptation. And we're going to do a little Bible study. I'll do a little slower than normal. On the whole subject of temptation. This is something that everybody in this room needs. You're tempted. We're all tempted by things. Uh, attitudes, words, thoughts, stuff. Uh, ways of living. Everybody's tempted. The Bible said every man is tempted. When he's drawn away of his own lust and enticed. Now the actual definition of temptation, the actual definition of temptation is the proposition, listen to me, the proposition to satisfy a good appetite in a wrong manner. Like when the devil told Eve to eat the fruit. There's nothing wrong with eating. There's nothing wrong with eating fruit. But it's the wrong way to satisfy that hunger. A temptation is a proposition to satisfy a good appetite in the wrong manner. I like Dr. Rutgers to say everything in this world that's bad is something good twisted. God made it all good to start with and it got twisted by sin and the devil. So we'll talk a little bit about that this morning. And temptation is something that every Christian must expect and, and, and it, you know, I mean, it's going to happen. It, and we all know this, you've heard preachers say it is not a sin to be tempted. No, it's not. It's that, that old song right here in the, in the book, the old song says, Yield not to temptation, for yielding is sin. So it's not a sin to be tempted. Um, I think it's around in here somewhere. Uh, yield not to temptation, for yielding is sin. 
The best way to put it is like this. The best way to put it is like this. You can't stop a bird from flying over your head. But you can stop him from building a nest in your hair. Right? Amen. That's good. Now, if you get that right there in your head and in your heart, uh, you, you've, got, you've got more accomplished than most people that go to church this morning. If you just get that through your head. It's not a sin to be tempted. As a matter of fact, you can expect it. It's going to happen. You'll never get to the place where you say, I've heard people say, oh, the devil don't bother me no more, buddy. I've arrived. No, you've not. No, you've not. The reason you say that, he's got you. Uh, if you ain't butting heads with the devil, you and him go in the same direction. So this morning, let's think about it. I like uh, temptation like the sea lion and the seagull. Did you know a uh, sea lion, you know what a sea lion is? Well, them big old ugly, just a big old blob of something just float around the water. They look like a, they got a big long nose. And they look like a hippopotamus sort of without no legs and they just waddle around. You know what them things eat? Seagulls. Now how in the world can a big old thing, big as that pulpit, snatch a seagull and eat it? And what they do is they go down under the water and they just stick their nose up like that and make a little whirl in the water. And the seagull thinks it's fish. And when the seagull comes down to, to, to get that fish, they open it up and swallows them whole like that. That's what temptation is. The devil will never show you the hook. When a man goes fishing, he don't throw a hook in there. He puts bait on the hook. And he throws a bait in the water. And the bait's that woman at work that's bothering you. The bait is that girl you're dating or that boy that you like that's a bait. You don't see the hook. The bait is the boys having fun going out on Friday night and not showing you the hook of the drugs, or the alcohol, or the whatever the devil. See, that all you see is the bait. You don't see the hook. You know, stupid fish swimming around under there. They don't know. They don't know. They look around and say, oh, good night. And they bite it, and then, the, and then he hooks them up and throws them in the frying pan. And that's exactly what the devil does. He, he'll show you the hook, or the bait, and not the hook. Let's talk about that just a little bit this morning. And uh, you'll leave it. Don't. You don't want to be like the, the little boy who, who um, well, he, he, he was, his mom kept fussing him for going swimming every day. He'd stop by the swimming hole and go, fit, go swimming every day before he got home. And his mom kept fussing him, fussing him, fussing him. And she said, I'm not going to do it no more. He said, I'm not, Mama. He said, but I'm going to take my bathing suit just in case I'm tempted. Uh, that's the way a lot of people do. They, they make arrangements. Just in case you get tempted, you know. Now, I, I'm not I'm not going swimming, but I'm gonna just in case I get tempted, <laughs> I'm gonna take my bathing suit and I'm gonna I'm gonna no, that, that's not the way you resist temptation. Yield not to temptation, for yielding is sin. Each victory will help you some other to win. All right, help me on. All right, I've got too much. I've got too much. I don't mean to fuss, but y'all cannot get up. I, I, ne I never do this, but you got to sit still. You will not die the rest of the service, okay? And people write your mind, I can't believe you're busting to people. I'm not being mean. I'm trying to keep you from being mean. And uh, you got to. And so, anyway, uh, what happens is when you, when you see the bait, you go after the bait, and the hook is inside of the bait. So this morning, let's think about that. What, what you think might look good ain't really good. And we'll talk about that just a little while today. There's spiders. There's actually spiders. It's spider season. You know that, right? You notice all the spiders now? I ride riding four-wheeler through the woods the other day. I felt one go all the way, and I felt it all in my hair, a spider web. And I thought, well, I don't mind a spider web. Because I just did like this. But the, where's the spider? And I had Frankie on the, on the back, and I held my arms up like that so it wouldn't get on him. And when I got home, I was pulling that spider web out of my hair. And everything goes, I tell you, I don't like snakes, but I really don't like spiders. Because usually when you look down, you can see a snake. Man, them little buggers, them little, little brown recluse or a black widow or one of them things like that, they're so little you don't even see them. And I was, and I was out in the yard picking up trash the other day, and I felt something back a fire out of me. I was barefooted. It should have had enough sense to put shoes on. But I out there in the yard working, and I felt something bite me right there and bite me right there. And I thought, good night. And his little bitty ain't say what you couldn't hardly see him. 
How do they get their mouth open big enough to bite you and make a place on you? I don't know. Their mouth is, you have to see a microscope to see them. And, uh, and they bite. That's what, they, that's what they do. And those spiders, some of them look, they change colors. Some of them spiders change colors to look exactly like the flower that they're on. They go from yellow to pink to red. What about that? To catch their prey. A spider can get on a, leaf, a flower and look just like it. Change colors. How many times have we heard uh, a girl told me, she said, Brother Danny, I, I liked, I thought I loved him and he was the best thing in the world, but finally I saw his true colors. Hear that? Brother Danny, I thought she was right. Boy, the way she treated me, I saw her true colors come out. That's what a spider does, to catch the prey. Anybody can put on a good act to get you deceived, and then it's too late. So this morning, we'll think about that. Quickly, quickly, quickly. Let me say this. I'm talking about the source of all temptation. The source of all temptation. Understand me this morning. The source of your temptation is not God. I know people misunderstand the scripture where it said God did tempt Abraham. And of course, you don't understand God did test. He tempted Abraham as a test. The Bible said God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempteth he any man. So God don't tempt people to sin. He allows temptation to come to us, but he's not the source of it. He allows it to come to us. So whatever your temptation is, if it's money, liquor, drugs, being lazy, overeating, oversleeping, whatever your sin is here today, I'm going to show you how the devil puts that in front of you. The devil, the Bible said it's not God. The Bible said it's Satan. The Bible said Jesus came to, uh, out there one day and he hadn't ate anything and Satan come and begin to tempt him. And you know the temptations that he threw at Jesus. We'll talk more about that in a minute. We understand the temptation not only comes the devil, but temptation comes from your own flesh. The Bible said every man is drawn away of his own lust and entire. Sometimes we blame stuff on the devil that the devil didn't have nothing to do with. It's just our old sorry good for nothing self. That's right. And so you, you, you hear me this morning? The source of that temptation would be the flesh. And sometimes temptation comes through evil companions. Evil companions, kids. Evil companions. The Bible said, He that walketh with wise men shall be wise, but a companion of fools shall be destroyed. Now let me tell you, all you people in here that are struggling, all you folks that are struggling with addictions, you're struggling with, uh, uh, if you're, I mean, anything from suboxone to crack, brother. Anybody in here su uh, struggling with some kind of addiction, whatever it is, I tell you what you've got to do. You have to absolutely limit the people that you hang around with. Whoever you hang around with, sooner or later you're going to do like they do. You say, well, Brother Danny, I just see the good old boys. I know they all drink and cuss and everything, but we're all friends and we go out on my, yeah, you're fooling around with something going to get you. Uh, you better hang around with the right crowd. Uh, you're not strong enough. I'm not strong enough. Nobody else is. You better hear me. Evil companions. Evil companions. It ain't going to be long till you'll dip a little bit if you hang around the wrong kind of people. I don't care if you're kin folks or next door neighbor. Evil companions uh, will cause you to sin. And then there are, then there's uh, the most dangerous times is when you're off hours, when you're not working. Help me finish this. Ain't a verse, but it could be. Uh, the idle mind is the devil's what? That's what. That's right. You lay around the house, don't do nothing. Lay around all day long. You know, you get your phone out. Uh, you're a sitting duck, brother. I mean, the devil's right after you right then. That's where the source of temptation is. Secondly, the reasons for temptation. Somebody said one time, they said, Preacher, how come God don't just fix us when we get saved and then we're and, and it don't bother us no more? Wouldn't that be great? Yes, that would be great. But God has a reason for us to be tempted. It's twofold. Number one is to test your faith. God lets that man at work flirt with you girls. Test of your faith. You say, why don't God just kill him? Oh, that'd be an easy way out. He wants, but watch out, he kill you. Well, I, I, you know what? It's a test of your faith. You say, well, he already knows what kind of faith again. Why is he need a test for? It's so you can see what your faith made out of. No faith is good unless it's tested. It tests it. And if you fail, you build it back. If you resist, you get stronger to test your faith. Years ago, they said they made a, uh, they made a, uh, 
a, a railroad bridge back when they used to do it the hard way. I mean, with them old trusses and stuff across this big old valley, across the river or something. And this thing was gigantic. And and some people when they're building, they said that thing will never, that thing will never hold. Them them uh, locomotives are heavy, big old engine. Them thing weighed I forgot how many thousand tons or whatever. And they they put them on there. And, and here's what they done. They said when they got that railroad bi bridge built, they got two locomotives completely loaded out, set them on that bridge, and revved them up and let them idle all day long. Shook that thing to the ground, brother. And I mean that thing is like that with all that weight on it, all that weight on it like that, and they run around and stood the test. It's more than what it would be ever you ever ever that, that was more weight than it would ever have later on or more test than it ever have later on. And that's exactly what God does to me and you. Sometimes God looks down. Sometimes the Lord looks down like he did Job. And the devil said, uh, uh, ain't nobody down there loves you. And the Lord said, you consider my servant Job? What about him? And God let the devil get all over Job. Now listen to me, people. That time may come for you. That time may come for you. I've had people tell me. They say, Brother Danny, I'm tempted so bad I can't. Say, you just don't know. It didn't used to be like this, but this is driving me crazy. It's all I can think about. The devil's tempting me and they go back. And I, I didn't bother me for a long time. And here it comes and I have all these desires. And I have all these wicked thoughts. And it takes all I can do. You know what you're doing? That locomotive sitting on you of rattling like that to test you. To see if you'll hold, the test, to hold through and pass the test. And you make sure that you're built out of the right stuff. And got your feet on the ground and you're able to withstand what the devil may throw at you. That's why, that's why you get tempted. Test your faith. And then it's also to test your obedience. To see if you'll obey God. Genesis 21, the Bible said God to tempt Abraham to know the depth of the sincerity of Abraham's love. And, uh, and then he would say uh, this. Uh, he, he would say this. What is the, he knows the load limit of your temptation. God knows the load limit of our temptation. You've seen it. You've seen it on these old country roads. You're getting ready to cross the bridge. It'll say, limit, so many tons. And, and they, always, they always underestimate it. That way, if, if a big truck or something wrong broke it, they, you couldn't sue them. And, uh, and you have, if you got too much weight for that bridge, it will break. I'm glad God is our load limit, ain't you? Amen. Amen. He promised you in the Bible that He would not allow you to be tempted above that you're able. I'm glad He knows our load limit. Not only the load limit, but the time limit. You see, admit it. There are some times in your life when you was about half backslid and messed up, if the wrong thing would have come along, you'd have did it. And the Lord will protect you from that time come. And then when you get strong, then he'll let. He knows the timing of it. Thank God for that. Don't act all holy on me. I mean, look, you're made out of same. We're all made out of same stuff. This old flesh right here is capable of any old sin it ever committed in the past. You better not underestimate the power of what that old flesh right there can do. But thank God he knows our load limit. And thank God he knows our timing. It can be right. He sets the time. He sets the limit. He sets the amount of pressure we can handle. And no matter what you're going through today, you can look up and say, Lord, I pro you promised me in your word. You wouldn't allow me to be tempted above that. I'm able. I'm claiming that verse. God, give me grace. And just keep right on walking. Right on walking. You know, cause, you know what's going to happen pretty soon? What's happening going pretty soon is the temptation is going to be over and the devil will leave you. And he'll leave you alone. Right before you got a big uh, battle coming up or right before you got something important or right before you got something to do, he'll jump on you with both feet. Brother Wayne, who's gone to heaven now, he used to fast a lot. And he'd fast sometimes seven days, sometimes 21 days. And Brother Wayne would fast and pray. You know what he told me? He said, Brother Danny, he said the strangest thing. He said, after I fasted two or three days, he said the almost these old wicked, evil stuff I never even thought of starts hitting my mind. And he said, I know where that's coming from. I said, that's right, Brother Wayne. That's the demons of hell attacking you and trying to make. And you say, here I am trying to live right. This old wicked, evil, crazy stuff uh, runs through my mind. And I'm telling you this morning, brother, you better understand that God allows that but it won't last forever, and it will go away. Glory to God. Hallelujah. The load limit of our temptation. Then the methods of our temptation. The methods of our temptation are 
Poverty. Did you know it's really tempting when you're real poor to get mean as a And it's really tempting when you're rich to get full of the devil. You're better off to be in the middle somewhere. A whole lot of money is, will get you in trouble and none will get you in trouble. That's why David said, Lord, just give me what I need. If I get too much, I'll forget you. If I get enough, I'll curse you and steal. And so, Lord, help me out. The devil, no, the, the, the method of temptation can be poverty. But the method of temptation can also be riches. The method of temptation can be prosperity. Sometimes when you really prosper, you have a tendency to forget God. Worldly fame. People, that's why it's so hard for people, famous athletes, movie stars, uh, uh, politicians. It's so hard for them people to stay right with God because they're around so much and got so many people around them with so much. That's a dangerous way to have to live your life. Listen, you'd be better off to live at home on a modest salary and raise your kids and keep them in church and never see Hollywood than you go out there and ruin your life and die without God and be lost forever and ever and ever. Worldly fame, discouragement. You get real discouraged. You get down and out. Your marriage ain't right. Uh, you fuss and fight all the time at home. And you thought, boy, if people at the church only knew, they wouldn't have no confidence in me because of the way we act here. And I'm, I'm about ready to give up. What good does going to church do anyway? And then the devil comes around and jumps down all over you and makes you discouraged. We're living in a very discouraging time. I've never seen so many preachers discouraged. I've never seen so many singers discouraged. I've never seen so many bus workers just discouraged. Saying, "What's he? Listen, that stupid coronavirus knocked out more bus routes, knocked out more people that are we're having a hard time than anything that's ever hit the church in in our lifetime." But thank God, thank God, thank God, you don't have to let, let it get you down. You don't have to let it get you discouraged. You just keep right on going, right on going. By the way, you know the devil can't do nothing with somebody won't quit the devil can't handle somebody won't quit amen uh, amen that's right uh, the methods of temptation all kind of stuff like that like this the devil comes to Eve she's in the garden how you doing there sister well I'm fine how are you I don't know you do I oh I'm just an old friend of the family thought I'd stop by and say how you doing everything all right Why? yes well, what about you and Adam? Y'all get along fine? Yes, he thinks I'm the only woman in this world. And the old, the old visitor says, have you ever tried a bite of that right there? She said, no, we're not supposed to do that. And immediately, he got woke and liberal. And the devil's a Democrat, you know that, right? I, didn't, I mean, I didn't write the Bible. He, he's for everything they're for. I don't get mad at me. If you think it's political, it's because you're a nut. Amen. You need to read the Bible. Amen. Ain't no politician going to save us. And I ain't politicking for nobody. But I'll tell you one thing, brother. Here's what he told her. He basically said, listen, girls. Basically, the devil says, the reason you believe that is because you've been raised that way all your life. And all you've ever heard is God and Adam. And they've told you all your life, Eve, there's a whole other world out here that you don't know nothing about. You probably was homeschooled. And you, you don't, you, if, you, if you went to a Christian school, you don't know what's really out. Here's a whole, and she said, really? Oh, yeah. See, you just believe that because you were taught that all your life. There's other people in the world that believe same thing. And how do you know they're wrong? No, he started working on her. Working on her. That's what TikTok will do to you. That's what Instagram, that's what Facebook, that's what TV, that's what Hollywood, that's what rap, that's what rock will do to you. You just believe that all your life. You, you're, you've lived in a shell. You've lived in a bubble. You need to break out and explore. I mean, my goodness. Look at here. I'll take a bite. I don't know if you did this. Devil said, okay, it doesn't hurt me. Uh, and and she and he talked her into it. He talked her into it. Now you beware, you girls, beware of anybody who talks to you like that right there. Oh, you've been sheltered all your life. Look out here what they do in the world. You didn't even know about all this, did you? Oh my goodness, look at that. Uh, they're all 
They're all this, and there's Adam. You and Adam think there's only two genders, male and female. How a weirdo! You old, archaic, outdated, uh, uh, dark age, crazy people. Just believe there's two genders. Are you crazy? Why well, there's 57, up, oh, up, 58, just coming up and in on my phone while I was talking. Up uh, 59, uh, and 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 in the and the devil got talking to her, and the devil made her believe that little by 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 little. Don't listen to the devil when he tells you. Well, you just raised in North Carolina and you've heard your life. If you'd have been raised in Africa, you might not have believed that. That's the way the devil lies. Listen, people. The truth is the truth is the truth. It don't matter if it's from Africa, China, Japan. And by the way, there are people all over the world that believe exactly what me and you believe here this morning. We've got the truth, but the devil will put that in your mind. Wouldn't you like to try another path, Eve? No, that's a sin. Oh, that word's out, not even in the dictionary no more. Where China's rewriting the Bible and ain't going to have that in it. They are, really. They really are writing, rewriting the Bible. And, and they're making a Bible where, where God is a, is a woman. And they're going to make a movie where God is a woman. And Eve said, wonder why they don't make a movie where God, uh, the devil's a woman. He said, oh, well, she don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, I got you, didn't I? Uh, yeah. They'll never make it, they'll never write a Bible where the devil's female. They don't mind leaving him. Oh my goodness. Bunch of jealous little brats. Uh, they're jealous of, of male authority or whatever. They, they're crazy, really. Uh, they, they ought to thank God they are what they are and be shouting happy about it. Ain't that right? But anyway, uh, that's that's a method of her temptation. Listen to me. You know what you gotta do? You gotta battle with yourself. Paul said, I see another warring in my members. There's a battle raging inside you. What your, 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 your old man wants to do wrong. Your new man wants to do right. Whenever you hear something that makes wrong sound good, your old man says, yeah, let's do that. I like that. And your, old, your new man says, no, 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 no. Whenever you hear it singing like, I got much more than I asked for, your new man says, yeah, glory to God. And your old man says, ugh. How corny, what a dumb old nerdy song is that? See, you got you got that inside you. The methods of temptation and the types of temptation. Here's all the types of temptation. Unbelief, Genesis 3, 1. Worship the devil himself, Matthew 4. Pride, Nebuchadnezzar. Pleasure, Demas. Power, Simon in the book of Acts. Society, Lot's wife. Uh, possessions, Achan, there in the book of Joshua. The flesh, Solomon. All these things are types of temptation. Then there's the results of temptation. There are only two possible results of temptation. You either you either give in to it or you resist. That's it. Only two possibilities. You either give in to it or you resist. That's right. Amen. When you resist, the Lord is glorified and the saint of God is strengthened. Amen. But this dog, a guy doesn't have to train this dog. And it, it's amazing how they train them dogs to do stuff. And he, he would, uh, he wanted his dog, you know, how some of them dogs are real sharp, man. Some of them, some of them German Shepherds and some other dogs are really, really sharp. They're, they're smart. And that dog would sit there and just look at him like that, you know. You know how they do, watch every move you make. They're like that. And he'd throw a piece of meat on the, on the floor. And that dog would go, huh? And he said, huh? huh? And he was training that dog. He was training that dog to look straight at him. And he said, okay. And then he reached out there and get it. And then he put another piece of meat on it. And the dog looked down and said, nope, nope. He trained that dog. Don't look at that piece of meat. Keep your eyes on the master. And that's what the Bible teaches us to do. Don't put out there what the devil puts in front of us. Keep your eyes on the Lord. If you'll keep your eyes on the Lord. You'll, you'll know the right thing. And then, and then I'll say how to have victory over temptation. I'm going to finish this up and you listen carefully. Here's how you get victory over your temptation. It is not your willpower. It is not your self-discipline. Although that can help. People say, I got a strong willpower. I'll never do this again. I'll well, you're not that strong. I made up my mind. I, you're, not that, you're not that strong. You need help from somewhere else. 
Now listen. If Jesus Christ resisted the devil, then I'm going to find out how he did it, and that's how I'm going to do it. So the devil comes to Jesus, and he said, uh, oh, you're the son of God, right? Turn that rock right there into a piece of bread. And the Lord didn't say, no, Satan, no, Satan, I'm telling you, I'm praying all night. Lord, please get him away from me. Lord, I, Lord, see, that ain't what Jesus did. Jesus said, it is written. Got him a verse of scripture out of Deuteronomy. Man shall not live by bread alone. But by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Bam! That's how he did it. Now what you've got to do is get you some scripture on your temptation. Whatever your sin is. Laying in bed half a day. Eating too much. Sleeping too much. See, you thought I was going to say lying, murder, and adultery and all that. And I am. I am. Lady told me one time, she said, Danny, what if you go out here and get drunk and then you die? I said, Well, what happens to you if you go out here and gossip and you die? It's amazing, isn't it, how we categorize sin? Well, it's all right for me to be a lazy, good for nothing bum, sell my phone all day. Them drunkards are going to, you know, you can't look at it like that. You're bad as they are. Amen. Come on, preacher. That's right. That's right. Getting quiet in here. I'm telling you this, this morning, listen, cut up, bus kids. I just don't like it quiet. Just kidding. Just kidding. For heaven's sake, babies cry. It's better than a quiet church. Mom and daddy won't holler amen. Just kidding. Uh, Jesus said he's written. Then the devil said, well, if you're the son of God, you're so great, cast yourself off here. Talk to him. And the Lord said, it is written, thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Amen. See, Jesus, every time, well, if you're the son of God, don't you just bow down to me one time. One time. That's the only man that's ever been here that the devil was willing to give everything, all the kingdoms of the world, and everything to just even bow one time. That's a different kind of man right there. That's a de- Jesus. The devil never offered that to nobody else. He might give him something in Hollywood or a place in Maui that mysteriously missed the fires, but he 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 ain't gonna he ain't gonna hit a normal uh, normal man and say I'm gonna give you all the kingdoms of the world. And Jesus said. It is written. Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God and him only shalt thou serve. So, that means this. Just to help you with your battle against yourself. Use the word. If you have a temptation to drink alcohol or use drugs, I'm talking about smoking pot, right? And it's, you say, well, when God said, well, if, why did God make weed if we're not, well, he made poison oak too, dummy. You're going to smoke some. Your lips will be full of like. You won't have to have him stupid looking lip injections if you'd smoke some of that stuff. I think some of y'all done been doing it. Look like a duck. So, your scripture is this. Every time you're tempted to drink, wine is a mocker, strong drink is raging. Whosoever deceived thereby is not wise. Woe to him that puts a bottle to his neighbor's lip. Uh, look not upon the wine when it is red. When it moves his color, stab it. Don't depend on your willpower. Don't depend on your strength. Say, here, what's the word of God? The word of God. It'll leave you alone. Maybe you have a trouble with evil thoughts. You say, Brother Danny, I can't help it. I think the most evil, wicked thing. My goodness, I, I, my mind driving me crazy. I've had people tell me. They said, Brother Danny, I can't even go to church for having lustful thoughts about all the girls. Listen, y'all. Listen. Quote, get you some scripture. Get you some scripture. And say, Lord, evil th- communications, corrupt good manners. Uh, let thy thoughts be established. Commit thy works unto the Lord. And thy thoughts shall be that whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are good report. Think on these things. You got to train your mind to think right. Resist it. What if you're messing around with somebody you ain't married? Or you're going to bed with somebody and you ain't married. The Bible calls you an adulterer and a whoremonger. That's what it calls you. I didn't write the Bible. I didn't write the Bible. I'm just telling you what it says. You say, I don't like this church. I'll never come back. What good is going to church if the preacher don't even tell you what's in the Bible? You might as well go fishing. Listen, you're supposed to be married. You're supposed to be married before you sleep together. Married. And if you ain't, get you some scripture. Marriage is honorable in all. Hebrews 13, 4, something like that. Marriage is honorable in all. Marriage is honorable in all. But whoremongers and adulterers, God will judge. 
Now the body is not for fornication, but for the Lord. Get them scriptures. You've been quoting, I try, but every once in a while I just give it. You've been quoting them scriptures? Or making excuses like everybody's a sinner and we all come short. Yeah, whatever. Yeah, go ahead. Get you some scripture. You've been having a lot of doubt. You say, Brother Danny, sometimes I just doubt. I don't even know if there is a God or anything. Doubt. Say, Lord, I believe. Help thou mine unbelief. I believe. Help thou mine unbelief. The Bible said, Faith cometh by hearing by the word of God. Get serious. Get down to business. Quit playing church. Get down to business and deal with your temptation. Whatever it is. Been stealing. Taking a little money from the boss at work. And you say, well, he's got plenty of money and I deserve more. How about this? Let him that stole steal no more. But rather let him work with his hand. Labor. It's not right for you to steal from your boss man just because you think you deserve a raise and ain't getting it. <laughs> I know people pretty good, boy. I've been doing this a long time. What about pride? You think you're hot stuff? These six things that the Lord hate. A proud look. Quote it to yourself. Lust. You say, I got a problem with lust, Brother Danny. I'm a... First thing you do is quit looking at stupid stuff on your phone. And then so, quote Matthew 5, Whosoever lusteth after a woman committed adultery with her already in his heart. Well, yeah, it's impossible. Nobody can. Uh, 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 you, the Lord will not tempt you above that you're able. You know what some of you all need to do? Quit playing around and get serious about your temptation. Because if you don't, the Lord will smack you. If you're really saved, He'll smack you. And when He smacks you, you've done been smacked too, bud. See, my temptation is, I, I think I'm gay. I don't know you ain't. You wasn't born that way. You know what you need to do? You need to learn Genesis 13, 13. Genesis 13, 13. You know the first time that word sinner is used in the Bible? Genesis 13, 13. Men of Sodom were sinners exceeding wicked before the Lord. I didn't write it. I'm just telling you what it said. The first time, the law of first mention, first time sinner is mentioned in the Bible, Genesis 13, 13. About homosexuality. That stuff is absolutely drowned in this country. You know why? Because people don't want to fight temptation. They want to give in to it. The old song said, Yield not to temptation, for yielding is sin. Come on, Miss Desi. Each victory will help you, some other to win. Fight manfully onward. You'll never hear that in a mega church. Fight manly onward. Dark passions subdue. Look ever to Jesus. He will carry you through. You'll never hear that in a mega church. You ever hear a song like this in a mega church? Shun evil companions. Bad language disdain. God's name hold in reverence. Nor ever take it in vain. You'll never hear that on TV church. To him that overcometh, God giveth a crown. He who is our Savior, our strength will renew. The faith, he'll conquer. Look at Jesus. He'll carry you through. Now, what I've done this morning is issued you a mild rebuke. I'll just give you a mild rebuke this morning. That's the best way to get correction is from somebody preaching. If you don't listen, the Lord will take the next step and then the next, and he'll finally have to smack you. My advice to you today, if he's dealt with you about something, don't be too proud to come to this altar. Get down here on your knees and say, all right, Lord, I'm going to deal with this. I ain't perfect. I ain't, I ain't going to know. I'm never going to live exactly perfect. I ain't talking about that. I'm talking about sin shouldn't reign over you. And just deal with this temptation with it. I stand by her head for prayer. She's playing the song. This is the invitation. We're not going to sing. We're just going to pray here for a minute. If you want to come pray, come on. The truth is, about 90% of us ought to be in the altar this morning. That's the truth. Others coming. Others coming. Brother Danny, the devil hits me all the time. Yeah, well, join the crowd, brother. He does me too. Amen. He does me too. We have to pray. That's right. Others coming. Others coming. 
Who's coming? Amen. 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 Bow your head right there where you put your stand. The Lord, help me to get the scripture. Help me to get the right scripture for whatever my temptation is. And you get some scripture. He'll help you to overcome it. He'll help you to overcome it if you use the scripture. Get you some scripture and memorize that scripture and fight. That's your sword. That's your weapon. Amen. That's your weapon. That's your weapon. Amen. Heavenly Father, I pray right now in Jesus' name, Holy Spirit, that the power of God Almighty will come upon this crowd here today. Lord, we are no match for sin, for Satan, or self. Lord, we need help today. God, give us all grace. God, give everyone a grace to stand. Grace to get the victory, Lord, over whatever it is that's holding us back. Lord, I pray that you'll forgive us of all sin, everything, anything about us, wrong or wicked or sinful. God, forgive us. Help us, Lord, we pray. God, bless Shining Light Baptist Church. Put your hand on this place, Lord. Use it for your glory. May Holy Ghost revival come to us in that big service tonight. Bless the men of God as they preach. Bless the singing. Bless the good fellowship. God, we need help, Lord. Help us, Lord. God, please help us, Lord. Bless our church. Add to it such as should be saved. Lord, do the will of God for your uh, for our lives. Whatever your will is for us. Help us, God, we pray. In Jesus' name we ask it for his sake. Amen. Some still praying this morning. Amen. Some still praying this morning. Whatever it is, unbelief, lust for power, prestige, the flesh, the world, the devil, whatever it is. Amen. Amen. Some still praying this morning. Some still praying. All right. Amen. All right. Those that, that we've talked to and, and wanted to join the church, if you're saved and living right. If you're saved, been baptized and living right. Come on up here. We'll get right here. Right here at this time. Those that we've talked to, some want to join the church. Come on over here, Richie. We'll just stand right here this morning. Come on, Brother Darren. Amen. Amen. Come on, just make a line right across here. There we go. We got several more coming, I think. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Look at that. Amen. Amen. You're saved and living right. If you're saved and living right, you're being a hypocrite, the Lord will get you. If you're saved and living right, won't join the church. Amen. Let's see you playing softly. I think we got some more coming. All right. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. I think we got one or two more coming. Amen. Amen. All righty. Amen. Amen. Anybody else? All right. Got these. Get, get these names here. Thank the Lord, Miss Mary over here. What a blessing. I, I don't know about her old man. He's iffy. He's out there. He's driving a bus this morning. So thank God for him. Amen. And, and then I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk, talk to you too. Just a minute. And then we got Richie here. God's done great work in Richie's life. Don't thank God for Richie. Lord's changed him. Brought him out of a life. If you don't believe in you can be rehabilitated. He got it. Got him a job, got him a house, got him a bad looking Toyota truck, Tacoma, and the Lord's blessing him. Thank God for him. Make something out of his life. Amen. And then we have Darren and Glenda. Uh, thank God for Darren and Glenda. They just got married here just a few months ago. And what God's done for them. And then Miss Tara and Mallory, they moved down here from Michigan, been here all, all, almost three, two, over two years now. And uh, thank God for them. They've all been claiming them. We got Joe. Uh, God's done a great work in Joe's life too. Amen. Joe and Donnell. Uh, amen. And then and we just met her. And I forget your Matthew. That's right. And this boy comes every Sunday. Comes to church every Sunday. And so we'll just take all these one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine here together. Someone will make the motion. Uh, second motion. All in favor, let me know. I'm an uplifted hand. 
Amen. All right. Now we're going to ask them to stay up here. And you you come by and give them the right hand of fellowship as, as an official member of our church, okay? All right. All hearts clear? Amen. So y'all just stay up here a minute. Amen. you done the right thing. If I was you here this morning, I'd find a good Bible-believing church, and I'd get in it, and I'd support it. Now, if you didn't join this morning, we're going to do this again in just a few weeks, so you get in on the next load, okay? I had baptism last Sunday night, and had I think 11 got baptized, and uh, it was good. So praise the Lord for it. All right, all hearts clear. Don't miss tonight, Sons of Thunder preaching.